Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I hope you're all doing well indeed and we're here to continue our weekly discussions on uh, classic TV shows and uh, yeah I've been watching some uh, classic TV shows uh, this week and uh, obviously I want to um, discuss uh, some of them uh, but uh, We'll have Christian along uh, very soon, I hope. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be, uh, as I said, we're going to be continuing this uh, conversation that we've been having over the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, we want to get your opinions. Uh, but I've been watching um, TJ Hooker, uh, William Shatner's uh, TV uh, cop uh, show. And... You know, when you listen to celebrities and Hollywood today, when they talk about diversity and inclusion, and they talk about wanting to talk about all of these uh, social uh, issues, well, there was no better show, in my opinion, uh, at doing this than uh, T.J. Hooker. Um, now, I remember watching this show as a kid, and what I've been doing lately is, is kind of going back and watching all of those shows that I watched as a kid, and watching them now, and, uh, you know, after watching, I'm on the second season now, we're coming near the end of the second season, um, I have to be honest, um, this show is um deals with a lot of a lot of issues. Um you've got uh obviously in the eighties at the time, uh the United States of America and some countries around Europe uh were dealing with a drug uh, epidemic. Um and this show doesn't hide uh, from that fact um have to say this show back in the day would be considered very preachy and and woke all the terms that we hear uh today but the startling difference is, is what the way they do it today the way they did it back then is startling i mean every ca character i mean look at we talk about diversity right so we've had We've had blind people. We've had deaf people in the show. Uh, we've had black people in the show. Uh, we've had um, Latina people uh, in the show. Uh, we've had ve uh, very strong female characters uh, in the show. Um, and every single one of them is not wasted um they're given the character development uh you get the feel for some of these characters i mean it's it's the issues that they were dealing with back then as i said you know the drugs the all of that other stuff that was going on during the 80s is very prevalent in tj hooker um now you know you can argue about some of the acting in it uh, William Shatner does kind of ham it up quite a bit uh, in this show, but not in a bad way. I mean, his, his, his character really gets involved in all of the cases that he's involved in. I was only saying this to Cheryl, though. It's a bit... I kind of get... The, I, I get the premise of the show. So he was a detective whose partner was was was, was killed. He was exonerated from any any um, wrongdoing. But instead of going back to being a detective, 
he decided that he wanted to go back out on the streets. But it's very early in the show, right? You can tell that he's still doing the detective work, even though he's supposed to be a beat cop. And obviously, this ties in with the academy, which Cheryl uh, pointed out. Well, that's what they use as an excuse so he could do the academy being the beat cop. Because being a detective, like you wouldn't be do, doing the training academy stuff. So, kind of makes sense from that point of view. Um, but I was kind of like, you know, he should have should have just stuck with the detective angle on it. But I could understand why they wanted to, because you got all of these rookies. And obviously, you know, TJ Hooker is, 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 is uh teamed up with one of these uh rookies but as i said it's very very hard hitting but again you know the, these people today that cry about diversity and and cry about you know highlighting certain issues in their society well in the 80s they were doing it and they were doing it a lot better in my opinion uh william shatner's performance in 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 this for me actually you know when he doesn't ham it up you know he's very believable um you know they've started now season two there's a little bit more of a comedic element to it like to kind of end on a bit of a laugh at the end of every episode like they used to do in the 80s you know because the stories that they'd be covering would be very harrowing um but this is what i'm saying like all of this stuff was going on in the 80s yet it was on television but it was done so well and it was highlighting all the issues that needed to be highlighted, like letting the public know what was going on, but not ramming it down their throats. And we've got uh, Christian in the studio, so we'll just bring him in while I'm obviously talking <laughs> TJ Hooker. But <laughs> you said Hooker. I, I have to be honest. Listen, uh, uh, you know, as, as I said, the, the, I watched this show as a kid. Right, growing up. Mm -hmm. Now I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Got to be honest. But you know, I, I started off uh, last week watching Dallas. So I've started watching Dallas again because I used to watch that as a kid, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm bleeding loving that. Right. So then I saw T.J. Hooker was there, and I said, Do "You know what, man? I've been willing. I've been saying I'm going to give this show another go, right? Because you know." Shatner does ham it up, but I have to say, as the see, I'm on the second season now. He's toned down a little bit, and, and he's acting. Some of his acting is very convincing. I have to be honest; I think he's actually very good in it. Um, but I tell you, I wasn't expecting it to be as hard hitting as I said. They deal with the drug epidemic, you know, getting into schools. They deal with alcoholism within teenagers. You know, drugs within teenagers, you know, they're all the different gangs. Like, I mean, this is like hard hitting stuff. And this was the 80s, but it was done in a way like Hollywood talk about diversity. As I said, man, there was literally every race nearly in this bloody show. I mean, but every character that they introduced, or, or even if it was a guest star, they weren't wasted. As I said, they've had a blind woman and they've had a deaf lad in it i mean they've they've literally you know they're ticking off boxes back then but yeah these characters are so well developed that you don't even you don't even notice that because they play an integral part to the story um i'm actually surprised i can't believe how much i'm not messing with his lads right and ladies in the chat i cannot believe how much I'm actually enjoying this show. I have Cheryl's head wrecked with the team tune because the team tune keeps coming on. I keep running into the room, pretending I'm a cop with me two fingers like a gun going yeah. into the room like this. Like, seriously, man, I'm genuinely, man, enjoying this show, right? And as I said, I've been watching Dallas as well, but I've kind of got stuck on TJ Hooker for, for now. So I'll, I'll continue the end of it, but um, then I'll get back to Dallas. But I'm telling you now, man, don't care what anybody says. The, the quality of TV back in the day is far superior than what we're getting today. I, I don't care. What, and that's that's what I've learned from this week, watching 
the classic TV shows that I've watched. There is no comparison. There is none. I mean, they knew how to write stories back then. They knew how to incorporate all of the social issues that were going on at the time and all of those topics that were hot in the put in bars around America, in homes around America, and put it on screen. And I'm just blown away at the superior quality of a show like TJ Hooker compared to most cop shows that we get today. And don't get me wrong, the Law and Order franchise do do hard hitting stuff and all of that. But TJ Hooker, there's just something different about it. It it just stands out in my opinion. And that's the way they should do television. It's 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 brilliant stuff. I, I, I'm not messing. If you get past Shatner hamming it up for the four seed, there's only five or five or six episodes in the four season, and then the second season gets loads, right? Cheryl explained it to me. They always do around five or six episodes for the four season to see if people like it, and then if they don't, then they can just move on, sort of thing. But then the second season gets something like twenty six episodes or something um and i'm on episode 19 now i think of season two uh heather lockyer has uh, obviously joined uh the cast as well and again you know she was blonde she was beautiful but she was actually given decent stuff to do on the show she wasn't just a pretty face you know what i mean every character has been given a job in it and is well developed and this is the 80s folks this is the 80s. If you could just get past Shatner hamming it up for the first few episodes, right? I'm telling you, by the time you get to season two, Shatner really does grow on you. And I have to be honest, some of the episodes, I mean, I watched one with the deaf kid in it. And, I, and I'm being honest with you, some of the best acting from him, he really bleed and gets into it. And, and I was convinced that he really cared about this kid. It was just... Man, I'm telling you, man, superior television, superior. Anyway, I'm going to stop blowing smoke up TJ Hooker's ass for a few minutes and uh, see what Christian uh, has for us. So, Christian, any TV show? I was about to say, I only show, got an hour, dude. <laughs> you want to keep going? I'll be back. Any TV show? Well, we were only 15 minutes in, so we've got, we've got 45 minutes. Um, is there any TV shows, the way I'm explained with TJ Hooker, that were, were kind of like for you, that you've watched now that are that you realize were are better now than they probably were perceived back then. You know, because that's the way I see TJ Hooker. TJ Hooker is one of those shows that people always kind of laugh at. But after watching it, it's a hard hitting stuff, man, and it's actually very good. Have you got any old TV shows that you thought were a bit of a joke growing up, but now you look at you've looked at them as an adult and said, Wow, that's actually pretty amazing stuff. I wouldn't say it would have got, uh, things were better. I was just saying that if I was to, com I would take some 80 shows and compare them to what currently is right now, and they would dwarf them in a heartbeat. Some really great, I meant this, uh, well, uh, if you can say, um, I think Star Trek The Next Generation, Quantum Leap, when you talk about geekdom, those, those would smash that. Not only that, but the ideologies, if you really look at the storylines, for like Star Trek The Next Generation, it would not work in a post-2016 world. They just doesn't. If you look at the stories, I mean, like, um, what was it? The the story about Data's daughter, you know, and, and the Federation wanted to take her away. And if you're looking at what's going on in the news right now and things that are happening today, my God, start, they, it would just almost be like nobody watched that show. Yeah. And there's some really good stuff. Uh, to me... The, some of the gems that I liked when I was a kid, um, I know nobody remembers it. I liked it. I thought it should deserve to have gotten longer. I like Max Hedrick. I thought that concept was pretty cool. I thought the idea of Matt Frewer talking to himself <laughs> was awesome. And they had some really, it was, I think it was like 10 minutes into the future or something was the tagline or, or the sub uh, subtitle on it. And lo and behold, we are kind of there. I mean, that that TV show could not have predicted the future any better than what's going on right now. And, uh, you know, Knight Rider, which I thought was always camp. But I, you grow up thinking like, you know, William Shatner's camp. Knight Rider well, again, was campy, but it was fun. It was mindless fun. That's all it was. It had its morals. It well, didn't take 
subjects and cram them down your throat. It had fun with them. And you got to decide, you know, what was right and wrong. Of course, there's always, you know, the, the legitimate end to, uh, you know, we have to end the story. Yeah, Lindsay, Buck Rogers for crying out loud, Gild your heart. This was just mindless fun. That's all it was. But uh, to tell you the truth, if somebody, and I thought they did, I think a sci-fi channel did, they tried to reboot Buck Rogers. If somebody tried to reboot Buck Rogers, say, Christian, you had a choice. You had to rewatch all the Buck Rogers with Gil Gerard, or you had to watch a new series. I'm like, I'll watch Gil Gerard in a second. Again, now, the shows that you bring up, again, they all dealt with hard-hitting issues but it wasn't ran down your throat it was very well done the characters mm. again were all even night rider as you brought up yeah it was corny at times same with the a-team it was corny at times but if you actually look at the issues that they were dealing with within certain episodes man yeah. it was hard hitting stuff but it was done as you said for the audience to kind of make up their their, their you know because it was always a, a moral thing with these shows so it, it, that was always up to the audience to decide. You know what I mean? Some characters were 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 black and white. It wasn't just straightforward with them. You know, they had bad things about them, but they also had good. So they the the, the audience were always like when you were going along with a story or journey, they were conflicted with a character because on one hand you loved the character, and on the other hand you want to hate the character because of certain trait. It was very well done, man. I have to be honest; it, it's it's embarrassing right now. Oh, look, uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that they haven't created any decent shows in the last 10, 15 years. Of course, they have, right? I was a huge fan of Lost in Space, the rebooted version. I love that version as well as the original. And I obviously I've been watching uh, the original as well. That's another sh classic show that I've been watching for a long time, mm -hmm. and I've revisited it. But again, all of the, the, the uh, what I'm saying is yes, they have made some good TV shows. But but during the eighties, I don't care what anybody says. I think that was the prime. Uh, well, well time if you look, if you listen shows. to these social medias, they make it sound like you know civil rights started in 2016 on Twitter. And I'm like, no, these these fights, these little shows were already twisting the knife way mm. before you were even born, way before That's what you were even conceived. And they've been doing it. You just, uh, as I tell people, you have a privilege that us in the 80s didn't have, us in the 70s didn't have. You have the privilege of hindsight. You know, you, you can go on your Twitters now and you can do, do those things. And I'm like... If you were living during that time or the times when, you know, things were bad, like 1776 and all those years where everybody's going out there going like, well, I would have been different. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't have. No, 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 no. You would have been living the life that you would be living right now in during that time. Um, you know, if slavery is so bad, go bust up your cell phone, prove it to me. Otherwise, you're just a hypocrite like all the rest of us. It's, it's what we've been fighting for all this time, but slowly... If you can entertain people at the same time, give them the moral message and make people think about it, like Star Trek The Next Generation did, like Doctor Who did at times, well, like uh, Quantum Leap did so flawlessly, you can really change minds and do it in a way that it is peaceful, that it is productive, and that people can get together because they're using their geekdom to get together. Of course, you know, I sit back when people are like, well, they're bad people in the fandom. Like, there's like, there's racists in the fandom. There's there's sexist people in the fandom. I'm just like, really? In Doctor Who? <laughs> I just sit here and go, it's like, why are you projecting things on people when you don't even know who you're talking about? If they don't like something, find out what they don't like and move on with it. And that was so great about the 80s. Uh, you know, they're, they're saying like, well, you know, diversity. So I'm like, dude, I, I grew up with the Cosby show and the spinoff. A different world. I grew up with 227. I grew up with Webster. I grew up with what's happening now. Uh, I grew up with Family Matters and, and other shows that were up there. Webster. I grew up with uh, different strokes. I grew up with, uh, and, and, and this is my guilty pleasure. Nobody knows about this gem, but I appreciate it. There was a spinoff of The Odd Couple that was done by Ron Glass and Damon Wilson. And I actually mm. appreciated that one. And it only ran for a year and a half or something like that. It only ran like one or two seasons. 
Yeah. And the only reason it got busted is because they were taking the scripts from Jack Klugman's and um, uh, Tony Randall's show and basically rehashing them. And it's like, you can come up with some new concepts there. But they took the characters of Felix Unger and... Um, oh, God, what's the other one? Um, Felix and... God, now I'm sucking wind at this. And made it their own. And it was mm. uh, it was a fun, you know, feel like Oscar Madison. Yeah. They took one of my favorite playwrights, Simon, um, Paul, uh, Neil Simon, which uh, when I went to college, nobody liked. <laughs> this is like, oh, he's a comedian. So, oh, yeah, I like to write comedies. I'm like, I'm not into Shakespeare, which was big in my college days. It was like everything was Shakespeare or Mamet or Pinter. And I was just like, I like just making people laugh. There's a meme going around with Danny Kaye going like I didn't I never aspired to become a Shakespearean actor. I just like making people laugh. That's why I went into this industry. And people forget that sometimes what it takes to yeah. win people over, make them laugh, make them feel good, and tell them, hey, you know what? I just want to take you on a ride with a great story. But in the meantime, I'm gonna drive a moral home, which you could probably, if I can make you think about it beyond this episode, maybe even years later. And appreciate that. I have won what I needed to do without having to say a single curse word or beration or a projection or anything. Uh, uh, Fiona, I yes, uh, another channel that tells us back then when Better Dude had his heroes but hates kids now having their heroes. No, I don't. No, I, no, no, I, I, I think that's an unfair state. I, I have no problem with kids having their own heroes. <laughs> The problem is, is that they're using air heroes and they're basically recharacterizing them, making them completely different to what they were, and then introducing them to a, a, a new audience while alienating the fans that actually uh, fell in love with these characters. I'm all for everybody having their own heroes and inspire and someone uh, or a character or a person. I, to inspire that person but i don't understand see, where this is coming from either from what we've just said well i, I mean all we're talking about why, is all well, shows and how i think personally they're written better than today's shows i mean i mean i'm not attacking anybody's heroes here everybody can have their heroes the problem is is that compared to the heroes that we grew up with you know they were done properly i mean today even some of our heroes They've brought them back on screen and sometimes they don't do them justice or as I said, they change the character or they change the kin skin colour of that character or they gender swap that character. And, you know, I don't think today's audience really understand mm -hmm. we're attached to these classic characters. We grew up with them all our lives and when we see that they're not being respected, of course we're going to speak up. But no, nobody here... Or anybody that runs a YouTube channel that talks about how bad it is in Hollywood and around the world with the industry uh, has a problem with anybody having their own heroes. As I yeah. said, I you know, know. You, you you got to understand that we did grow up with some of these heroes that are now being introduced to the younger audience and they're not the same characters. Of course, we're going to have a problem with it, you know. And, you know, fans are going to speak up just like you guys speak up and defend your characters and your heroes and stuff. We're going to do the same. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I just wish that both sides of, of any argument could get on with each other and just hash it out and, and talk it out and understand each other's point of view. I mean, this is this is why we've had a problem in fandom all around all around the world and all in, in different fandoms with different TV shows, different movie franchises, is because both sides just don't listen to each other. I mean, we have very strong opinions. You know, we have, we're, as we said, we're emotionally, we're emotionally attached to these characters. And this is a thing that you will never understand. And you mock us for it as well. We get mocked for it as well if we get upset about something. Because you don't see them that way. You just want to use characters as as whatever for whatever agenda. That's that's the way we see it. They're not these characters are not being developed naturally. You're forcing issues on these characters, a certain ideology on these characters, 
And then, as I said, you're completely changing the character that we grew up with. Of course, we're going to have opinions on it. Well, I mean, let me break down this. Uh, and Fiona, I'm not taking it in. Uh, you know, we're not trying to insult or anything. like. Can you bring that back up for a second? Yeah, let I don't think we have been insulting. Though. We're only no, we talking about this, TJ this Hooker. Taking, like. This is why I'm taking a hard look on this, on this what I can consider a projection. Um, this is just, I don't know where this is off the cuff because we haven't legitimized anything that you said there. Ah, yes, another channel tells us one way back, what, what uh, tells us back then it was better. For me, yes, because today yeah. I don't even watch the, 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 the TV shows, the remakes, the Magnum PIs, the Hawaii Five O's, the Transformers. I don't even watch them because mm. they were so well written back then. They had a moral back then mm. that I don't see being creeped up into today's. Uh, modern tv i just don't appreciate that now that's my opinion you don't have to bow by it but mm. I, yeah if i you know i'm sorry i'm older generation when i do see stuff and they say oh we're gonna re remake this and i see the first episode and it's garbage i'm like yeah i'm gonna call it out it's not mm. what it's supposed to be and if you decide on the second half where it says dude has his heroes but hates kids i don't hate kids i go to conventions and the one thing that if you had know anything about me i'm going to conventions to tell people to watch doctor who now having uh, their own heroes yeah the, well depends upon what kind of hero they're preaching out out there uh it, you know if it's during the time that we grew up it, it was you know i think there was more moral a better moral message at the end of gi mm -hmm. joe where it's going now you know and knowing is half the battle when they had all that and in any episode of gi joe then stuff that they were putting out in the movies today exactly so this is this is my grievance as to what's going on today and plus you're uh, I, and everybody that I know parrots this, you're not showing me anything new. You're just taking something old, trying to repackage it. And mm -hmm. you, you're taking a whatchamacallit bar, putting a Snickers wrapper on it and telling me it's a Snickers. No, it's a exactly. <laughs> no, you're right. Exactly. Not, That's what no it is. Different. So Fiona, we're and, like bashing the heroes or the kids. And I don't know where that projection came from. None of It's the repackaging that. of those. It's the changing right. of them. You know what I mean? You've got to understand that. <laughs> There is, see, this is the thing, you, you, I'm not saying you in particular, Fiona, but I've seen this in fandom. There seems to be a bit of a, you seem to think that we're, us, all our fans are self-entitled and stuff like that, and that we know best, right? It's not always the case, right? But it's not self-entitlement in this case, but the, you could argue that we do know best because we grew up with far superior, well-written superheroes. It, it, it's not our fault that that's the generation we grew up in. And we expect a certain level and a certain standard. And none of these characters that they've reintroduced to the, 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 the audience today have reached those levels at all. They're a cheap imitation of what we grew up with. And this is why we're so vocal about it. But And, and, and the reason why we are is because we think everybody in fandom deserves better you deserve better superheroes you deserve them to be treated with respect Correct. and to be developed properly and to be given the tools so people fans can you know go along on their journey and believe in their journey and all of this but they're not well written today i mean i find it quite funny and laughable that over in hollywood right now all of these writers are on strike and I would say to them, what have you done in the last 10 years that justifies this strike? Because to me, nothing you have done in the last 10 years justifies this strike. Right? Now, people can argue whether the, the studios are right and wrong in doing what they're doing. But as far as I'm concerned, I have no sympathy for any of these writers because they have delivered nothing but mediocre garbage for the last 10 years. You'll get one or two hit shows a year if you're lucky, right? Okay, but for the majority of the 10 years, they've given nothing, nothing but garbage and then told us then, us fans, right, us consumers, customers, that we don't know best where a bunch of racist bigots, homophobes, whatever, sexist, whatever label, right? And now they want us to feel sorry for them all of a sudden. 10 years later, they want us to feel sorry for them now and to stand with them because the studios are not treating them right. Well, do you know what? You would have a much stronger position if you had a, wrote some decent TV shows and some decent movies. 
uh, the last 10 years, which is have failed to do. You have had flop after flop after flop after flop. If I hadn't, if it's not, if, if it hasn't been for people like Tom Cruise, right, and the likes of the Super Mario movie and the Sonic the Hedgehog movies and stuff like that, we'd be in a Hollywood would be in a worse position than it's in right now. Maverick, the likes of those have saved their ass for for a, a, a while longer, but beyond no illusion, the reason why Hollywood's in the state that it's in. Is because none of these writers that are on strike right now are good enough, right? Look at the shows that they've given us, right? All the Star Wars feckin' spin-offs, right? They they do they initially do okay, and then after a couple of weeks, then they bomb, right? And then you've got all the other Netflix then shoving their crap bombs, right? And now they want us to feel. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't feel sorry for them. The only way. That you clear the swamp, right? Of all of these talentless hacks, is to continue this. I, I, you know, what? I'm secretly back in the studios on this because we need to weed out the crap writers. We've had them for over ten years. It's about time that something is done about it. And then when they start producing great stuff and writing great stuff again, and building great characters again. Then we'll get behind them then when they need to strike. But for now, I'm not getting behind them. I do not support them because they've given us nothing but rubbish for these last few years. So why should I feel sorry for them? She-Hulk, perfect example. And all the Star Wars shows. Mando did well at the start and then they completely destroyed that. Okay? Whether it's Kathleen Kennedy or whatever, I don't care who it is at this rate. Right? Every Star Wars show they do ends up in the fucking dirt. In the bin. All right. And it's the same with the movies that they've released. Flop after flop. Indiana Jones is going to flop hard. Right? A legendary character that we grew up with. Right? And then what do they do? What do they do? They bring that character back. Right? He's too old anyway, Harrison Ford. No offense. But to bring him back to play Indiana Jones again was bleeding the worst decision anybody could have made at Lucasfilm. But again... They wanted another franchise that they could milk, right? Another character that they knew was beloved by people like me. And what do they do? They give us a bloody crap version of it, right? Crap version. And this is why we're so passionate and we speak up. Because that's not Indiana Jones. Crystal Kingdom of Crystal School wasn't either, right? It ends with The Last Crusade for me anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But why they even thought to make another two movies is beyond me anyway, because after Crystal Skulls, that should have been it anyway. But no, I they're greedy that, in Hollywood. They've no original ideas, so they bring back characters that we love, and they destroy them time after time after time. And then people wonder why we're always moaning. Well, if you respected them and did them justice, we wouldn't have to complain. Go ahead, Christian. Sorry. Well, Deanna, I just had a question for you. Is there a hero during our time that's been reinvented to this time who who do you appreciate i'm just curious about that i'm not trying to antagonize i just want to see your thought process on this we don't hate kids they can have their heroes they can have their heroes as much as they want they we're just finding a foundation where kids can have good stories like we did that we grew up with that they could enjoy and there seems to be a faction where kids cannot appreciate certain children i'm asian can i you know can i dress up as black panther is a question can i do that and then there are people who will come up to me and go no your kid you know if i was a kid i wouldn't been able today back then it, it wouldn't even matter it's it's something that seems to be doesn't even need to be addressed out there and uh melissa has an interesting take you know it's my belief of social media and youtubers have ruined it all well first of all if we did Hang on, though. I just want to say something, though. I mean, you say you say a thousand men, and you say seven videos each week. You can go back and look at my YouTube, and you'll see that I cover a topic once, maybe, right? If it's a big topic. Second of all, it's disingenuous to say that it's only men that are complaining on YouTube when there are plenty of high-profile female YouTubers out there. I actually find it quite sexist that you actually say that it's men uh, when there are women that also. Uh, complain on YouTube, but again, you know, people like 
these people here like to blame men uh, on everything. Uh, women also complain about um, some of the things that we complain about. Actually, one of my co-hosts is actually female and comes on and, and is talking about The Witcher right now. She'll be on tomorrow to talk about The Witcher, right? And she's not happy with The Witcher. So again, I do think it is disingenuous to say that it's it's just men complaining out there, right? Because well, there's plenty of women yeah, out there that are not happy with some of the some of their their their, their heroes that they grew up with being disrespected, and that's what a common thing that we share together as men and women, as fans, is the fact that we are both aggrieved at the way our heroes are being predicted are uh, being shown on TV today. So again, you know, this bull crap, I don't know where it's coming from. I'm pretty sure someone has said something about me, and this is why a couple of people have uh, come into my YouTube channel today. But I'm not going to take that crap anymore. At the end of the day, well, right, if you want to blame thing. men on all the problems in the world, you go ahead, love, right? Well, here's the thing. But the reality of the situation is well, completely different. Well, here's the thing, Melissa. Why are you here? I mean, there are a thousand women. Can you go back to that comments for a second? Yeah, wanna, yeah, read it, read it there. It I don't first of all, this is my belief of social media and YouTubers has ruined it all. First of all, if you rethink they're wrong, why are you listening to us? A thousand men. I also know probably a thousand women who say this, and they're YouTubers as well. They're out there. There are a ton of them, each doing seven videos a week. Well, I don't have time for that, do you? But No, you know, neither do I. And it's like no that corporation. Shit. Away. Blasting everything, no corporation can match this. I, here's my take on this. Let's just say, Melissa, I don't know how, how old you are, but let's just say you're part of the millennial generation. If Zola and I grew up with a particular vehicle, let's just say uh, we're going to call it the Christian. It's the Christian vehicle uh, because I'm just, I have no idea. I, I don't want to use a product name. So let's call it the Zep vehicle. We grew up and we've always realized that the Zep vehicle had power steering. It was the coolest thing. We grew up, and it had CD players and everything. You could play music in it. And then all of a sudden, of this uh, in 2023, the the car dealer goes, "Well, we're going to take out the power steer steering. We really didn't need it. It's it's bupkis." And it's just like, "Wait a minute! It was great. Why would you take it out? Why would you want to re reinvent mm -hmm. this car?" The idea of every time that you get a new car is because they made one step improvement better. But when it exactly. comes to certain of these corporations, they go one step back, or they go, oh, we, you know, that car is old. That's a bad idea. That power steering don't need it. So when are we supposed to call this out when they take out the power steering when it comes to the media and, you know, and the product that we've always appreciated? What they don't understand is that that IP came before and it was supported by people before. The reason why you have the IP now is because they're people just like, uh, you know, Russell T. Davies with Doctor Who. There were people who still supported it when it was all said and done back in 1989 and they brought it back in 20. Uh, 20, uh, 2005. So what are we supposed to do? Discard the old IP and tell people, you know what, it's not your show anymore? No, it is. That's why Or to accept media. Uh, what do you want us to do? To accept it? You want us to accept media? Right, we're going to call it out. And if, I you, mean, if you don't appreciate 1,000 men, then go to the 1,000 women who don't appreciate that and saying the exact same thing and coming up with their own conclusions. You don't have to come here. I'm not saying you're not welcome. I'm just saying that if that's your grievance, you don't have to listen to us. And you can start, you, apparently you've got YouTube, so you can start your YouTube channel and call us out and tell us where we gone wrong. But I like to see what kind of audience you're going to pull in because that's not going to fly with people who don't like it. Because Now, you need to be honest theory. with your audience, right? Yeah, it, I'm honest, right? I give me honest opinions. People like, some people like them and some people dislike them. Right? At the end of the day, but... As Christian said, if a, if a person out there disagrees with me or anything that we say here, well, you are free to do what we did, which is set up your YouTube channel mm -hmm. and go on and talk talk about your grievances or talk about why you love all of these characters and stuff like that. You have that right, just like we have the right to come on here and call out what we see is the disrespect of characters and and franchises that we grew up with we we want listen we want nothing more than the younger generation to enjoy what we enjoyed 
and then for the studios then to add to that so the next generation and to bring the old audience along with on the journey too because that's important and to see these characters go places where they've never went before but they don't do that they don't do that they use cheap little tricks they you know they the plot the voices we can go into the whole forget about the the swapping the race swapping and gender swapping and all of this if you actually break down the characters as well right and you see the stories that they're involved in the stories mm. are not great at all they're not great and the characters then that we grew up with they're not their shadow of the character that we grew up with so of course we're going to complain but i i for a long time listen i've been at this now nearly six years right and i've we've had this accusation thrown at us before and it is a thing in the media as well so i don't really blame the younger generation especially the women uh younger fans out there because they are being brainwashed into thinking that uh, it's uh, it's always men that are complaining it's always men that have issues with this that and the other right but that's not the case there are a lot of female fans out there that have been brave enough to speak up right and have spoken about the things that we've spoken about but a lot of them there is a lot of female fans out there that are afraid to speak up because as soon as they do right they get the same level of abuse that we get i would actually say that some female youtubers have gotten and i've gotten some horrendous stuff right mm -hmm. but i know some female youtubers that got even worse than what i got right because they came out and decided to be brave and what happened those people end up leaving social media or end up you know not doing the stuff that they covered on their youtube channels out of fear and that's the difference between me and other youtubers out there i'm not afraid of 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 these these fans out there they need to understand that we're entitled to our opinions just like they're entitled to theirs that what they're not entitled to do those bully fans for having those opinions and that's what happens a lot in the fan and all of this well, it's always blokes 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 so i'm sick of that listen we kind of probably deserve all of this because you know for 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 centuries women haven't been treated well we know that in the past right i don't think personally no. we should be punished for for mistakes no, that, it, that no, were made no, in the past because i think we've nothing, made some great strides but you it know has nothing to do with this conversation it has nothing to do with what they've been posting i mean melissa if you if you know it's like we're blasting the corporations it's just like uh, so good, give me a positive, Melissa. Well, what, what's the good thing that they've done? And it's just like, if don't you think if the corporations really wanted to appease us and make things better, they put the power steering back in and say, oh, we're going to improve this car. We're going to make it worthy of being 2023 and be upgraded exactly. and stuff. I don't want to blast these corporations. You no. know, I, these are the guys who feed us the stuff. But the thing is, if you're feeding us junk food, when instead you could be feeding us a really nice, healthy meal and make us full... You decided to go over there and shove Big Macs in our faces, and it's empty calories, and it's nothing. I, I just like, I'm sorry, you guys deserve the criticism. What are we supposed to say? Nothing? And that's not a male or female thing, or thousands of years of male dominance, or, or whatever their patriarchy. This is just, hey, can I have something decent? You are yeah, but that's what they blame. Though <laughs> everything is blamed on the patriarchy, on. though. You know, we, we're always at fault. I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, all we want, it's not even, it's not even, we're not even asking for anything much. Well, I just, I all we're asking is for our characters that we grew up with. If you're going to reintroduce them to a Age younger Age. audience, that's fine. But could you just bleed and respect them, please? You know, that's it. That's all we're asking. Not a good product. And maybe I won't be, you know, there was, I, I, and I don't go around blasting corporations but yeah like noel does we call it out if we don't like it and we give you a reason why and you can appreciate it you don't but if there's thousands <laughs> what was that joke about taylor swift um you know she uh, at one point taylor swift was writing uh, music that was against men and, and and bashing men and everything and then there was that one comedian going her next album should be maybe it's me <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's right. Anytime she split up with a boyfriend, she came out with a new album to bash that bloke. Um, 
and I'm thinking to myself, if you if you, if you're getting bashed, could you might want to step back from the uh, the attacking realm, uh, Melissa, and just say, maybe it's them. If a thousand men are coming out and going, this is crap. Maybe there's something wrong, and maybe it should be addressed. Uh, it's, uh, I I I I don't appreciate your guys' opinion. I mean, uh, well, I appreciate your opinion, but I don't appreciate the standard on the opinion. And nah, if you want to go nah. through and conflate it with things that have nothing to do with it, except for the value of what we are getting as far as media, as far as quality, then you're just attacking us personally and i'm like yeah you're going to change hearts and minds by jumping on this show and do it we fiona melissa i'm sure you're nice people but uh i mean you have not yet the 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 the, the, the onus is on you to prove to us why we should accept this and maybe address to why we are maybe overlooking something and if it's just going to be personal attacks then yeah you, <laughs> nothing venture nothing gain you just came in here to attack us thanks for playing but that's why well, they haven't that. responded, both of them, to no, we've think, been talking for over 15 minutes since they made that comment. So they just yeah, came in like, really to upset the apple cart. But I'm glad we they kind of did because we've got to set the record straight here because I'm sick and I, I am yeah, sick and tired of that whole narrative, you know, you know, blaming us for Hollywood not doing their jobs. But I'm sick of it, right? At the, at the bottom line is, right, we wouldn't be all on here criticize and well, we're going back Hollywood to that were doing where, their jobs we're going back to that thing where the corporation took out the power steering so we should blame the driver <laughs> for not appreciating we took out the power steering i'm like no. exactly <laughs> makes no. no sense man makes no, no. sense anyway we got jwc and the scottish stavros bobby Hi. has also uh popped into the chat as well uh scottish stavros says not all millenni millennials are full of crap bull crap in entertainment right now though i'm one that speaks out against this as a uh, scottish stab no, i don't i don't think millennials are are bad but they're getting uh like like i said they're getting a dose of junk food and thinking it's filling them up and this is the good stuff when we're sitting here back in the 80s going like no you really want some good stuff uh <laughs> we got a boatload of stuff that we we can show you that was much better yeah, I would say to any fan out there, go back and watch some of the 80 shows that we grew up with and then you'll understand where we're coming from. I think that's what these fans need to do. You know, it's called research. You know, if you want to know why you are, we complain as much as we do, go back and sample what we, we actually watched growing up as kids. And I mean from cartoons to TV shows to movies, I would, I would dip into all genres, right? And then you'll see the difference. And what we're talking about and why we complain uh here's fiona back anyway yes um let's see so there's the response so yes even companies themselves have realized whatever uh the youtube degree happens uh will in turn happen uh the dictate all they dictate all things now forever it is well known hate is easier gut wrenching listen i won't sit here and, and, and disagree with you that there are some youtubers out there that have designed their channel just to be toxic uh christian would agree with me on that one we we do know that there are channels that thrive <sighs> off that but it's disingenuous to blame youtube on the fact that the tv shows are crap they're still crap the yeah. problem is Hollywood. It's not YouTubers. Yes, social media has opened up this whole Pandora's box. Now we can get closer to the actors. The, the people that write these stuffs now can respond to fans as well. On that side of it, I do agree with you that that has probably ruined, uh, the, ruined the um, critique side of of. Uh, when it used to be the professionals now youtubers can do it now semi-professional like myself or whatever amateur right but bottom line is is this it still doesn't negate the fact that for the last 10 years they're not producing anything decent right so again you can deflect and say that it's youtubers fault that these tv shows or movies bomb you got to look at the writing you got to look at the character development you got to look at what these people are saying when they're doing interviews how they treat fans 
that's why these things end up flopping. I'm not. Right? Gonna, I'm, I'm not going to deny that there are YouTubers who use this. I mean, corporations put out something. The YouTubers, you know, whether you like it or not, they have their own thing, and they're just going to throw shade no matter what. However, mm -hmm. it could be also said that the corporations are giving him ammunition to do it. They do. On that, on that there's a safe. But however, uh, yes, yeah, social media, yeah, that's just why we came to this platform because if we did it the other way, the corporations would be telling us what to watch, what to do, and everything. And now we got people with voices. And the cool thing about it, part, part of, about it Fiona, you could be one of those 1,000 women who can come out there. You got a YouTube channel, go it, flaunt it. And if we're wrong or if there's something that somebody says is wrong, go ahead and be the advocate of your own voice. But be prepared to justify it. You're, like I said, you are, you're using this to antagonize the YouTubers. However, I have a question. Have have you ever heard what the YouTubers have to say as far as their grievances? If it's just pure hate and stuff like that, yes, turn them off, move on. Find somebody uh, else who gives you perspective on why they may have their grievances, why they have to agree with yes or no. I don't like the fact that we have to like everything. I watch Doctor Who. I love it. But there's episodes that I could live without, and I will call them out. And it's not because I'm antagonizing everybody. Right? I don't think I ever on my show antagonize an actual person for doing stuff like i went after their character or anything of that nature but i will antagonize and i'll stand on the hill of anybody who takes claim it, it, it's just like an artist who puts a painting on the wall some people are going to walk by and go oh that's a beautiful uh, art and yeah. some people are going to go by like what a piece of you know whatever everybody's going to have their opinion and that's what's great about having this fiona you can start up and do your own thing and tell us where people have gotten it wrong. And maybe if an audience shares your vision, you can attract them and, and do well, that. You've and made yeah, a, it is easier because it's much more fun and it's much Yeah, but you've fun, made a but, you've made a very interesting point there. And I want to just uh focus on that point for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you're saying, you know, that the toxic there's a toxic culture basically on YouTube. Well, Christian has actually even said it there. There's nothing stopping any of you guys for, that have an opposing view from setting up a YouTube channel, building up your audience and explaining why these characters are so great, but just don't do that. So it's not your fault that it might seem that there's there's more people with um, opposite views to you on YouTube. You want to change that, well, then you guys need to start going on YouTube and you need to start doing his own thing. I have no problem with any other YouTube channel out there, whether they have the same view of me or the opposite view of me of doing their thing on YouTube. Well, so, I mean, I mean it's, it's, again, you know, Fiona, you is there, yourself. Fiona, is there a proper way that I can criticize something without being criticized myself? Is there something, uh, it's, it's only hate if I go out there. Now, if I said, Oh my God! These people are awful. Or and, and and this and here here's a specific name of somebody. Here's a specific company of somebody, and they are just trash and they're garbage. And I want nothing to do with them and everything. I can understand if you get a a diet of that more often, that can be off putting. But I want you to. I'm challenging you, especially for our shows. Have you ever listened to what our grievances is? Did you actually listen to the first twenty minutes and see what is going on and why? We have our grievances. We want you to have a diet of really healthy, good food as far as when it comes to a product as opposed to junk food. And everybody seems to be appreciating that. And it's like, okay, well, I we've seen something better. We've seen both sides because we have the, the privilege of hindsight. We grew up in the 80s and 90s, and we grew up in this time. And we can tell you there's a lot more better stuff that we grew up with. And, uh, yeah, every generation says that, you know, when I was your age, da, 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 da. But have you ever listened? Just stop and listen to say, hey, okay, maybe, and you don't even have to agree with us, but at least give us the courtesy to listen without being antagonistic and saying, hey, you're just a jerk. Well, well maybe we have our uh, reasons and rationalities, and you don't have to appreciate it and move on. But you're still here, so I can see that there's something that intrigues you to become, uh, to continue to be part of this. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I got to take a hard leave on that. So, Melissa, Fiona, thank you for coming out over here. And even though the comments did seem a little bit antagonistic on us, hey, um, you're still welcome to come back and give your opinions. And hopefully you, you have some information to stand on, some concrete stuff that you can support, some uh, 
you know, some evidence or some some examples as opposed to just, well, we're just two haters that don't like we don't like what's happening now. We but we, yeah, we don't because it there's so much better stuff out there, Fiona. And I don't know if you're a millennial or, or, or somebody who's older, but if you're somebody who hasn't seen stuff back then, I, I challenge you to go for it. Yeah. And look at it and, and compare. And if we're still wrong, hey, we're still wrong. But at least you gave us the doubt and you did it on a more humanistic side and an appreciative side that people can have different opinions and move on. And that's something about social media that they need to learn. It's like that I can have a different opinion, but you're not you're not a jerk or, you know, a thousand men. It's just two blokes, one in the UK, one in the US. And we just have different opinions. And we came here to talk about that rationalize. And if you don't like it, you can move on. That's the great thing about this YouTuber thing. Adam, that's, that's, it. <laughs> that's it. And uh, Christian needs to head off. So what we'll do is we let him do uh, his usual uh, shout out. So Christian, let everybody know what you have coming up on your channel absolutely tonight is a little different we are doing what we call our ask us anything because uh we're taking a break for a celebration we've hit five hundred thousand views in our two and a half year existence on youtube so there you go i guess you know people have been watching us with our opinions on our side and that's the difference on here for the legend the traveling tardis nothing against noel show because noel speaks his mind but uh, our show speaks all minds, and we have different uh, opinions and such like there. So you're more than welcome to join us. It's at 11 p.m. UK time, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, and we're just going to – and you can ask us anything, and you're more than welcome to continue this conversation over there. Um, you know, and we will be professional about it, and we will be mature about it, and we will be cordial about it. If you can reciprocate the, the same way, we'll be more than happy to have a discussion about things that you might have a challenge and we may find some common ground together to work at with. But in the meantime, yeah, I got to run, but uh, it's youtube.com, the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Uh, please subscribe over there. And uh, we are closing in at 71,000 Facebook subscribers uh, on our Facebook page, facebook.com, the traveling TARDIS. So Noel, thank you so much. Everybody don't forget membership. We're trying to get him some new shoes and, uh, Yep, that's it, guys. I'll be out. Thank you so much, Noel, and I'll catch you next week. I'll see you later, mate. Take care. Anyway, that wraps up uh, today's uh, stream. Interesting, got to be honest. Um, I do, you know. Don't get me wrong. You know, as I said, we do. We don't. We don't mind actually different views uh, in the chat at all. And I would actually say to both uh, Melissa and Fiona, um, you know, if if that's who you really are, um, I would say why not check out the channel for the next couple of weeks, see what we're about, go over and check, obviously, Christian's channel out as well, and make up your own mind. I mean, at the end of the day, all we are are fans that just want their IPs to be respected and not to be, you know, messed around with for the sake of whatever agenda happens to be on uh, people's minds. You know, these characters are more than agendas. You know, they've been built up over time and fans have gotten very attached to them. And we will continue to speak out until there's a change. But again, you know, We've done watch-alongs and, you know, we spoke about TV shows that we actually do enjoy. This is the thing. Um, we've also been, we have had done, we've done classic Who and we've done new Who uh, watch-alongs where we've had a panel on and we've praised episodes. Even we were watching the Stephen Moffat era and at the time a lot of us thought it was very uneven We've re-watched it again, and, and a lot of us were really enjoying it. So we do talk about positive stuff as well. When they get it right, they'll get praise. When they get it wrong, we're going to call it out, and that's never going to change. But again, you know, people out there need to get away from this whole thing that it's just men complaining because that just isn't the case and it's very disingenuous 
to actually say that um there are a lot of women out there that are also uh, very vocal about their favorite franchises and their heroes and the way they've been treated but look this has been a very interesting uh, couple of weeks uh doing these sort of streams uh, obviously i did start off talking about tj hooker and about you know how good that show was for for the 80s and all of the hard-hitting social issues that they covered and you know it was it, it characters were very well developed and it was full of diversity and inclusion what they all bang on about today but it was done so much better that's all i said actually is that in my opinion it was done so much better than what it's been done in the last 10 years and then we got a bit of criticism which you will do on youtube but again when these people give us something to cheer about and, and, and give us something to actually get behind, you know, I will support it. As I said, I'm I'm actually really looking forward to the Blue Beetle movie, even though there's a few people out there that have said, you know, this could be used as another, you know, another character used to, you know, preach about certain uh, ideology or whatever the crap that they have in mind this time but i'm willing to give this movie a go because i really like the person that's playing uh blue beetle because obviously he's in cobra kai and i love cobra kai as well again as i said there are we we have covered cobra kai on this channel as well i mean we have done some uh we've banged on about how good cobra kai was actually picard season three as well we praised a lot uh strange new world season one I praised. I even liked Loki, even though Loki was getting a lot of stick off people. I liked Loki. I also liked um what was it? Um uh Scarlet Witch. So you know I mightn't like some stuff that they do out there, but I have liked some stuff. Again, I'd I, I I like to take me set, you know we do season one amanda was good as well yeah and we praise that as well like we do praise things when they get things right but again with shows like mando they went off the rails a little bit and i lost interest and i stopped watching it because it this because the writers did not hold my interest in the show and then start you know doing stupid things with it So, you know, there are stuff that we have liked. There is stuff that we don't like. And that's the way it'll be. Anyway, I am back on me Manchester United channel. So if you're a football fan, uh, Manchester United will be playing Leon at 2 o'clock tomorrow. But we will be live at half past one on Noel the Red Devil. So catch me uh, there tomorrow. We're also back here again uh, tomorrow as well uh, at 7 p.m. for our discussion with uh, P.D. Rich and Queen Charlotte, as we do every Wednesday. Uh, we'll have some Witcher talk and other stuff to talk about uh, there, so come and join me. And then on Friday, then, we have Friday night uh, contact and we have a member stream as well now. We are switching internet provider because, as I told you, we got rid of our Sky Q box. We're, we're done watching BBC and all of that other nonsense, so we got rid of it. So uh, we're going to be switching over to a new internet provider. So all so Friday, I'll let you know pretty early, obviously, if there's any issues. But as I said, we should be live Friday anyway, but we are getting that new internet in on Thursday. So um, obviously if you don't if you don't hear from me, then you know that there's a bit there's an issue. That's why I just want to let you know now. But there shouldn't be because we've timed it that we could switch over and there'll be hopefully no complications. So yeah. As I said, uh, we got rid of BBC, we got rid of all the other channels, we got rid of the Sky Q, we're done. Um, as I said, we would be. And uh, as I said, the rebrand uh, will be happening. Um, and 
we'll get on with all of that as well so i want to thank you for the support um and it looks like it's gonna actually rain here um why has no one ever tried to revive adam adam and for tv and would be premise of a show work i don't know man i don't know but would you really want them to do a classic tv show you know uh, uh, the way they do tv shows now uh, i'll be bringing as i said jack i'll be bringing on loads of people so yeah um it won't be happening for a while because i have to wait until i get some stuff in connection with the rebrand uh first so um we've got to sort that out um with lee obviously so um once i know he has something for me and stuff then obviously then i'll be getting the ball rolling and then yeah of course you can come on every i'll be bringing as many people on that have been with me since the channel has been named uh the card is on so don't worry you will get on uh and i'm pretty sure the stream will be more than an hour anyway uh so everybody that wants to come on that has been part of the channel over the last five and a half years under this brand name um will be coming on and as i said uh if it does clash with me working hours could we do another one uh listen look if, if it does and you happen to be in work don't worry jordan the, the, the when the rebrand happens obviously we'll be doing different stuff on the channel and i'll be bringing on guests and stuff like that we'll be talking about a range of different topics so yes you if you miss if you miss that stream don't worry about it you will be coming on under the new we brand and we will have uh a discussion um and whatever the topic is that we're going to be talking about and then maybe then we'll do some other stuff as well as i said don't look don't worry about it that everybody will get to come on all that's happening is the channel's just being rebranded that's it um and obviously then i'll be changing things up with streams and stuff like that because obviously the name will have to change and stuff like that so we'll be doing different stuff on the channel so don't worry uh enjoy enjoy the chat and all thank you very much and james says i make a good point that's what i mean man you wouldn't want them to do a class nah man not the way they do classic tv shows now man i wouldn't trust them i wouldn't and and think about if there was anything problematic in that show you know it'll be changed automatically because you know they can't stick to the source material is another thing that's a problem anyway we'll leave it there for now i'm gonna go off now it's gonna rain so um ted has to go out so um yeah but this uh whole climate change nonsense yeah we've had rain here the last couple of days like you know a uh, typical Irish summer so nothing unusual there so you know the way they're banging on about the temperatures you think the world was coming to an end anyway have a good one i'll see you very soon and thanks for taking part folks and, and and tuning in don't forget to like share and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do uh, and i also have a gaming channel for anybody out there we have reached 400 subscribers uh, i keep forgetting to actually mention the channel but it's called the irish geek we do some uh football streams there we will be doing uh ghostbusters episode two uh stream uh the game uh we did the uh the first episode uh last week so we will try get it done this week so uh tune in there as well the irish geek if you haven't subscribed we've we reached 400 subscribers on that channel uh, i like how you don't uh don't have a go at people with different opinions to yourself you actually hear them out and treat them fair other people would just shout at. well we don't look at you know i mean i try to be as as look sometimes it doesn't always be the case i have to admit uh some people just and some of them we do now just come in just to uh roil us up but thing about it is you are right yeah the, you, you, there's no point of of screaming or shouting at these people um all you're better off doing is trying to 
see what they've got to say, give your opinion and hope that there's some common ground somewhere. Um, and that's the way it should be all the time. Um, but as I said, there are moments where, you know, it can get a bit rough when you do this sort of thing. Because fingers point at you all the time. Your name is dragged through the mud and stuff like that. It's not easy. But um, if you really believe in what you're, in your opinions and you have strong beliefs, you know, I always believe it's better to get them out rather than keep them to yourself. So, you know, as I said, you know, I know and Christian knows and, everybody that's on this channel now there are people with different opinions um we just try to give ours and not ram ours down anybody's throats unfortunately there's some out there that try to do that and i don't agree with that and in the early days i may have been accused of trying to do that um it, it wouldn't have been my intention um but now certainly now You've got to, you, you know, there has to be an understanding that there is different opinions. But, what you know, the thing about it is I've no problem with different opinions. When they personally attack you, that's where we then have the issue. Because you don't need to be attacking anybody for their opinions at all. Um, but that's the way it is, you know. Anyway, thanks for uh, popping in, James. Uh, really appreciate that. And Jack, um, thanks for popping in as well. Really appreciate it. And to all you other guys in the chat, thank you. And we will talk to you very soon. Have a good one, folks. Enjoy the rest of your evening or wherever you are in the world. Uh, stay safe and uh, look after yourselves. <laughs>